Welcome to Second Opinion, the reviews show here on the Nexus. I am your host, Ian R. Buck, and today I will be talking about the Corsair Vengeance 1500 headset. Find the show notes for this episode at thenexus.tv slash SO70. All right, so the Corsair Vengeance 1500, what was the purpose of this headset? Um, it seems like the space that it's trying to occupy is kind of the reasonably priced, like mid, mid-range price gaming headset, right? As we know, gaming headsets can uh, creep up in price by quite a lot into the hundreds of dollars, uh, but, uh, but this one was comfortably set at around uh, $80 when it was being sold. Um, looks like it is not being sold anymore, uh, so this is more of a post-mortem than a review. We'll see what kinds of lessons we can take away from this headset and apply to our future purchasing decisions. So. First up, sound quality. The speakers in this headset sound freaking great. This was like one of the first times that I had a really, really good uh, headset with a lot of bass. Um, that's definitely going to be something that they emphasize in a gaming headset, of course. Uh, and uh, and they did a great job with that. Uh, I loved listening to whenever my go-to is the Mass Effect 3 soundtrack because uh, one of the early tracks in that album has uh, a lot of bass uh, to represent the uh, the Reapers coming in. And uh, and yeah, it just it it blew me away the first time that I listened to that uh, that soundtrack with the with these headphones. Uh, I really like the closed cup design uh, because it isolates me from outside noises uh, and then also people around me don't have to deal with uh, hearing whatever it is that I am listening to. Uh, So I do favor that over an open cup uh, ear design. They do claim that this headset uh, does simulated 7.1 surround sound, but you, you really shouldn't put much stock into that uh, claim. I mean, it, it everything sounds great, but really these are just, it's a, it's a stereo pair of headphones, okay? Now, of course, because this is a full headset for gaming, it has a microphone built into it. Uh, so to get a sense of uh, how that sounds, what the quality of that microphone is, here's me talking into that microphone. All right, so this is what the Corsair Vengeance's uh, microphone sounds like uh, when I'm recording it directly into Audacity. I noticed that there is a strange whine in the background that um, I've never noticed before when I used to use this headset for recording. I can't believe that I spent over three years podcasting using just the built-in headset microphone that I had um, instead of buying like a, you know a proper separate microphone uh, but we'll review microphones um, later on on second opinion so stay tuned for that now durability this is a very important factor uh, that is really difficult to know when a product is first released, uh, but we've had uh, this one has been around for a long time, so now we can definitely say, uh, I can definitely say personally that this thing lasts for a long, long time. Uh, I used mine regularly for five years, uh, and honestly, I didn't notice any wear or tear on it um, until I started thinking about selling them because I was replacing them with a an analog uh, pair of studio headphones. And, uh, and so because I was thinking about selling them, I, you know, needed to really take a look at them and see what shape they're in. Uh, and I noticed that, yeah, the, the fake leather covering on like the top of the headband is uh, peeling away, but really that's the only thing that, uh, is, is, uh, noticeably like not as good as new, uh, on this headset. The braided cable in particular really feels like it's never going to fray. It's never going to be a problem. Um, and actually, uh, it compares very, very favorably to the headset that I had before this, which was the oh, Razer Carcharius or something like that, um, which was uh, an analog headset. So it plugged directly into the headphone jack and the microphone jack on my computer. Um, and because uh, the 
Corsair Vengeance is a USB headset, um, the inline volume buttons are not prone to some of the problems that uh, my previous headset had, which was that the volume dial um, that, uh, you know, literally was just changing the cord's resistance in order to change the volume, right? That uh, started to, like, create static whenever I changed the uh, the volume, and then eventually uh, it just broke down completely and I couldn't use the headset anymore. Um, but that is not a problem with this Corsair Vengeance uh, USB headset because those buttons are just sending uh, a digital signal to the computer to tell it to change the volume in the software instead of uh, using hardware. By the way, uh, I love, love, love having those inline volume buttons and also an inline uh, microphone mute button. Um, that is has been very, very useful for me uh, as a podcaster um, because I could just, yeah, mute myself without having that button click uh, appear in the recording itself because it wasn't attached to the physical microphone. It was in the cord. All right, fit and comfort. This was definitely the biggest drawback for the Corsair Vengeance headphones. Um, for one thing, they're very, very heavy, 770 grams or so. Uh, yeah, they they press down, like, because they're so, so heavy, they press down on, like, the tops of my ears. Um, luckily, the the cups of the headphones were quite large, uh, and so they, they definitely, like, completely encapsulated my ears nicely. Um, but still, like, the tops of my ears uh, were being pushed down on a little bit, and the headband, uh, even though it is nicely padded, right it's still a lot of weight that's just being pressed down on the top of my head. Um, and I, in particular, I have kind of a, a sensitive, like, soft spot right on the top of my head. And so uh, I could never really wear these headphones for very long without starting to get a headache, um, which is not good when you're trying to do, like, long recording sessions and editing sessions. Uh, so, yeah, I'm definitely glad that I have replaced them with some headphones that are much, much lighter. But we'll talk about my new headphones in a later episode. The cups do swivel around. Uh, they swivel 90 degrees outwards. Um, so imagine if you're wearing the headphones and then you uh, slide the headband down and behind your head so that it's uh, just resting around your neck. Um, those the, the cups of the ear uh, of the headphones will swivel 90 degrees so that they're facing upwards um, towards your head. And, uh, and that's, you know, pretty nice for like, you know, you can basically just use these headphones as kind of tiny little portable speakers. Um, but also like the, the area where that rotation happens, um, the headband is quite wide and it is just a hard plastic. And, uh, and so when you rotate those cups, um, you now just have a... A hard plastic uh, spade essentially just like pressing down on your collarbones and that's uh, very uncomfortable so I didn't really like to wear these headphones around my neck either for portability um, yeah that's definitely not what these headphones were designed for uh, they've got a three meter long cable which is great for when you're like sitting at a computer and you uh, need to be able to like move around uh, you know from one part of your desk to another a little bit um, but it's definitely not ideal when you are trying to travel uh, luckily, there is a Velcro tie that's, uh, that comes with it, so you can use that to like help the, keep the cable coiled nicely. The body of the headset also doesn't like fold up or anything, so the, it's still going to take up a lot of space no matter what you do. Let's talk a little bit more about um, the fact that this is a USB headset and kind of what, what, how that affects how you're going to be able to use uh, headphones. So... I, can, I like it in some regards, and I don't like it in some other regards. One way that I like it is that, like, Windows and presumably macOS, I'm, I'm not quite as familiar with how macOS treats sound devices, but Windows treats this as, like, a completely separate sound output from 
uh, everything else. So I can do really clever things like, you know, route my music and most of my programs through like the speakers that are sitting on my desk while I have like the podcast that I'm editing in Audacity comes through my headset um, with a completely like, you know, analog setup with a soundboard and everything. Um, I can only listen to everything like th- through one output um so that's uh that's one advantage that usb has um a disadvantage that uh the fact that it's a usb headset is is that if i want to use these headphones like with my phone then i need to use an adapter in order to plug it in oh wait i do need an adapter if i want to use a three and a half millimeter headphone jack as well now so never mind that's not a disadvantage anymore However, uh, I definitely won't be able to interface these headphones with any, like, professional-grade analog soundboards or any systems like that, uh, which is the main reason that I replaced the the Corsair Vengeance headset uh, with a pair of studio headphones. So we will get into uh, some more studio headphone setups uh, in our next few episodes here on Second Opinion. So be sure to stick around for those. Um, before this episode, we reviewed quite a few other headphones, uh, mostly portable headphones, so earbuds and uh, things like that, a few Bluetooth heads, um, earbuds, a few wired earbuds. So if you are in the market for something like that, uh, be sure to check out a few of those episodes as well. Thanks for listening to this episode of Second Opinion. I have been your host, Ian Arbuck. You can find me on Twitter as Ian Arbuck. Second Opinion is released under a Creative Commons attribution license, so feel free to use any part of this episode as much as you want, as long as you link back to the original page, which again is thenexus.tv slash SO70. If you would like to discuss this episode with other listeners or with the host, uh, please go to our subreddit at reddit.com slash r slash the Nexus TV. And if you are willing and able to f- support us financially as we continue to make tech focused podcasts here at the Nexus, uh, go to our Patreon at patreon.com slash the Nexus TV. Until next time, have a good one. The Nexus, the Nexus, the Nexus TV podcasts from from the the technological technological convergence. Tech news is dominated by big, bombastic personalities. Developers, 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 developers. Sometimes we're filled with awe. Wow. Yeah. Sometimes they throw shade. Toxic hell stew. Sometimes they inspire. Live, learn, and love. On our show, Nexus Special, we recap and analyze all the biggest announcements and keynote events in the tech world. Subscribe to Nexus Special in your favorite podcast player today. I got one more thing.